Eu compartilho, então. Isso. Perfeito. Deixa eu sair daqui. Pronto. Ready? Ready. Welcome, everyone, to our first workshop of the of 2020 lives, webinars, interviews, a practical guide for a better communication. Uh, we are going to have uh, our member and friend Chris Gelboni uh, sharing all the best tips of how to make it really attractive to our public. Right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> But first of all, I would like to thank our trustees, BBG trustees, for their support. Uh, Westchester Financial Group, Art and Marketing, Northwestern Mutual, Coradine Law, Five Rings Financial, Bank United, Multimedia Works, Onzi Web Design, RVG and Company, Land Infotech, here represented by Glenn, and uh, Air Trade Aviation. Thank you, our trustees. Uh, secondly, I would like to ask everyone to introduce yourself. Uh, please be brief, just say your name and the name of the company that you represent, and then we're gonna move forward to our, to our workshop. So let me, let me start with myself. Andrea Faria, President of Brazilian Business Group and Vice President for the uh, Air Trade Aviation. Beth. Elizabeth Alderete, Residential Real Estate, Invest Brazil USA and Vice President of BBG. Yara. Hi, I'm Yara. I'm a chairwoman of Fourth Industrial Revolution Subcommittee for a nonprofit. And I just, um, I'm also co hosting a show called Space for Women. Uh, Obrigada. Thank you. Hi, Sergio Lopez. I'm director of Sports Entertainment Division at One South Florida Wealth Advisors. Glenn. Good evening, Glenn Benjamin, Glenn Infotech, and Tech Lauderdale. Thanks for inviting me. Evandro. Hi. Pleasure to be here with all friends and folks, member of uh, BBG, and I am Evandro Boys, CEO of Express Translation. It's a pleasure to be here. If you need any translation, let me know. Good presentation, Chris. Fernando. Your mood. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm Fernando Mello, managing partner of the IMG Capital. We are uh, consultants in business development and capital transactions. Thais? Sou eu? Yes. Ai, desculpa, eu tô dirigindo. My name is Thais Pagani. I'm the broker owner for Clear Ocean International Realty, residential real estate. I also do relocation for expats. Um, I'm here if you need any help. Thank you for being here. Okay, drive safe. Juliano. Juliano. Hi, I am Juliano. Uh, I'm a co-founder of SIS Intelligence. Recently, uh, I'm Joy Fernando and I am Jim Capital. We are doing business together. Okay. Renata. Renata. Okay. Rick, we come back to Renata later. Uh, Rick. Rick Green, I'm the executive director for the Brazilian Business Group. Okay. Okay. So, Renata, are you there? Okay. Silvana, just yep. in time to introduce yourself. Uh, I'm I'm without a camera now. I can I can video, but I'm I'm interior designer, so I'm joining Brazilian Business Group for a while, and I've been very happy to to be part of this great team. Okay, I'm doing like renovation and all commercial and residential areas, and helping 
um, realtors in order to to find a better solution for the houses they are selling also. It was very nice to be here. Okay. Alessandra? Alessandra está aí? Oi. Boa noite. Tudo bem? Tudo bom. Produce yourself so you can start. In English? In English? Okay, yes. I'm a journalist and also marketing consultant. And I've been working for more than 15 years here in Florida and for companies. So nice to meet you here, guys. Okay. Okay, Chris. It's you now. <laughs> Welcome everyone and thank you so so much for being here. Uh, let me start sharing my screen here a little bit. So ideally, uh, let me see if it will pop up. Okay, so basically I'm gonna, um, I hope to uh, talk for a few minutes to just give you some tips and then uh, we're actually going to practice it. So I want you to start thinking of questions that you will be asking on your next lives, your next interviews, so we can actually practice and you can come out of this hour and 15 minutes or so uh, with something that you can apply. And that's the goal of, uh, I'm very grateful and honored to be launching the series of workshops. And uh, so just a little bit about what this is. So I, uh, this is supposed to be, it's a three, I, I work when I'm doing coaching, communications coaching, I work with three modules, okay? So the first one is really for you to develop the message. Uh, it's really important to have a clear message of what you want out of that interview. What do you want out of their life? And many times people go into it without really knowing what they want out of it and what they, you want the audience to know Right, so it's really important to develop the message that must be aligned with the language and the image, and that's about building your identity, the identity of your company, the identity of you as a person, the identity, the identity of you as an artist, of you as a as a, 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 a realtor, a, a entrepreneur. So it's important to build the identity so everything else comes under it. The second module is about media training. And some of you have, uh, as Recommendo and other groups, you have seen me talk about media training and how to give uh, consistent interviews. Not to do, but to give. Like knowing how to control the interview. And the third module, and this one I actually created recently uh, because I've seen and I'm seeing so many people play journalists, and which is great because it gives us access to a lot of information, but on the other hand, a lot of the times, lives are not relevant. So how do you turn a life into a uh, relevant information? It's really to interview like a pro. And that's why I developed this third module. I was just, uh, I teach journalism at FIU and I was just talking about interviewing with my students uh, today and, and give good interviews, good questions, that's really, really what makes uh, an unforgettable, what turns a, a, a mediocre interview into something unforget unforgettable. It doesn't matter the, uh, the, you could be interviewing the most famous person in the world. If you don't have good questions, that interview will be just totally forgotten and, and, and that will end after that, nobody will remember. So what we're gonna talk today is really about uh, let me just time myself, sorry about that. Uh, it's really about um, how to create good questions, develop good questions, so then your interviews, your lives, your webinars will really be uh, unforgettable. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about me. Uh, for some of you who don't know me well, so why, why, why am I credible to be talking to you about this? So I have a uh, BA, uh, uh, bachelor's in journalism from American University from 1992, uh, that shows my age. And I have a master's in online journalism as well from American University. I've been a foreign correspondent for about 12 years in DC before moving to Florida. And, uh, and, and so I work mostly, uh, the majority of those 12 years, I lived in DC 17 years and the majority of the 12 years as a foreign correspondent was with Global News, 
uh, conta corrente covering, you know, the economics and, and uh, stock market. And uh, it was at the time that we had, I'll say it in Portuguese, many of you remember the Centinho, which used to be, that's what we called when you had the picture of the journalist on the screen. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the journalist just, just talked, uh, uh, but you didn't see them uh, on camera. So I come from that time. Um, so I have 25 years of experience as a professional journalist and half of, half of them really in the academic world because uh, in 2005, I decided first I wanted to be closer to home. Uh, I was tired of the cold after 17 years and Washington had become a bubble really strange after 9-11. And if the, uh, you know, somebody, a house would, would go on fire, but just a small fire and everybody would go crazy saying, oh, it's a terrorist attack. And I covered the attack. So, it, it became kind of a really strange bubble and I wanted to get out of there. So I came to Miami with the goal of giving back. So I really wanted to teach journalism the right way. And I'm very passionate about journalism and, uh, and the power of it when done right. And uh, so anyhow, so I started teaching at the University of Miami and then uh, Florida International University started the South Florida new service, which now is the South Florida Media Network with bureaus in DC and New York. And the South Florida News Service, I was the first news director. And uh, through that period, uh, students published in the Miami Herald, Sun Sentinel, Palm Beach Post, over 300 articles under uh, 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 when I was the director. <coughs> Sorry, through that period, I started to notice the need for coaching. And so I went ahead and received, uh, 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 obtained some, uh, a few coaching certifications in life coaching. And through that, I realized how important it was to train people in communication. So I'm telling you all of this so uh, you understand why I'm here and why you should listen to me. And uh, what I have to offer is basically my experience in this field. So let's get started on how to interview like a pro in your lives. And that's the module today and what we'll be talking about. Uh, as crazy as it may seem, the most important skill for efficient communication is very simple. Listen, how many times you're talking to somebody and people are not listening? I mean, from the most basic things, like when you call to complain about something on the phone to interviews. And you see professional journalists who do not listen. And we all complain. We all look at him or her and say, oh, that person, she, he, they don't, they don't listen. Well, that's the most important skill. If you know how to, if you de de develop a sense of better, you become a better listener, you're halfway there. I promise. There is not much you need, okay? But you need to learn to listen. So let's talk about some basic tips to prepare for the unforgettable interviews. And again, as crazy as it, is, as it might seem, prepare. Okay, so you need to research, know in depth your topic and the subject that you're interviewing, the person you're interviewing. How many times, many of you know me, we have gone out for dinner, for lunch, for friends, and, but many of you don't know well enough, don't know exactly when I got here, I just told you, but how many of you remember which year I just told you? But anyhow, we don't listen, right? And we don't prepare. So we think that you can just come out and say, oh, I'm gonna interview Chris today. She's a journalist, an educator, a coach. Oh, let's see what she has to say. And then you don't prepare. So you ask questions that are not relevant. So prepare, know your subject. When I'm doing an interview, professional interviews for Diretto de Miami, my column, which is kind of uh, at, at a pause state now, but when I did, I spent hours researching the person before I did the interview. So if I spent three hours researching, I would spend, you know, one hour interviewing and then another, you know, five hours, the sum of those putting it together. But the research is really key. Prepare yourself and then be spontaneous listen to the answers. So how many times you go into a live to interview somebody because the person is, you think, interesting, but you don't grab what's interesting about the person because you have not done the research. So 
If, I, if you live here with two elements, uh, that's it. Research, prepare yourself prior to the interview and listen during the interview. That's bottom line, okay? And then, of course, be spontaneous and listen to the answers because it's those answers that will generate new questions and the follow-up questions are way, way, way more important than the actual questions. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more. I suggest you have a list of topics. So you have a white piece of paper, large piece of paper that you can see everything in one, one, one page and you just write down topics. Okay, I'm gonna interview Chris. I cannot forget, I cannot forget to interview her about this, this, this and that. Okay, and what do I want people to know about her at the end of the interview? This, this and that, perfect. So do not have a list of questions. Some people have like 20 questions and I see with the young journalists, with my students, sometimes they'll come with like 20, 30 questions. And they get anxious about asking all those questions. And it doesn't work that way because you lose, you miss out on the, on the answers to get to the follow-up questions. And I always say do not interrupt or speak on top of your interviewee unless they don't stop talking. <laughs> so sometimes it's just, and talking a lot of things that uh, might not be as relevant for what you want out of the interview. But then gently switch the subject, find a way to, 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 to move on. But otherwise, don't talk on top of the interviewee because it's, it's annoying, it's disrespectful, not only for the interviewee, but especially for the audience. Remember, you're interviewing somebody. If you want to know about this person, you go have dinner with them, well, or go on a Zoom call nowadays. <laughs> but, but if you really want to do an interview with somebody, there is a specific reason for that. It's because your audience, your public, the people you are reporting to somehow, even if you're not a journalist, you're reporting to a group of people who are watching you. And, and so make sure that they, are, they feel respected. And it's really annoying when you're watching and people are talking and not letting the person finish a thought. Uh, technical technical tip. Tip. Okay, you wanna look into the interviewee's eyes. Of course, you cannot really do that on a Zoom call, but you can look at the lenses. So if I look at the lenses and not in the little, on the little square where I see you, you actually feel I'm looking at you, right? So that's what you want, okay? And then when you're interviewing, somebody in person, you want to ask that person to look at you. And I've seen even before COVID-19, a lot of people were doing interviews without the experience. And what happened was that you'd see two people sitting next to each other. You barely saw them or you saw this big wide frame, which is not very nice. And then uh, you'd have the person looking at the person being interviewed, looking at the camera, that means they are talking to your audience. They are taking the power away from you. You don't want to let that happen. It's like having them take the microphone, okay? You don't want to let that happen. You are in control. When you are on that end, you are in control of the questions and of the interview, and you are talking to the people back home that you want to reflect on whatever information you want to pass on to your audience. So don't let the interviewee look at the camera, let them look at you. So they're talking to you and you're talking to the people back home. Avoid distractions that affect the quality of audio and video. Squeaky chairs and chairs that go like that, you know, that, that, that they're not firm, they're not fixed. And many times that's annoying. It's annoying for the person watching if I go like this. And people, when they get nervous, and trust me, everybody being interviewed gets nervous. It could be the most media savvy person in the world. They get nervous and men always wear a jacket because you sweat. So avoid that at all times. And when I do media training, I talk a lot about that. Um, because it's really important that, that, that you don't let that show, okay? But anyhow, you're on the other end now, you're interviewing, 
And and uh, some people get nervous. And when they get nervous, like like I was saying, most people all the time on levels, different levels of of, of nervousness. But they everybody gets nervous, and they start tapping on the table. Have you seen that? They start tapping, and it's really, really, really annoying for people listening to it. So what you want to do is basically you want to just stop and make them relax because the more relaxed your interviewee is, uh, the, uh, 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 the more relaxed they are, the more powerful your interview will be, okay? So I tend to stop the recording and, uh, you know, before COVID-19, just put my hand on top of theirs and say, oh, it's just an interview. And, and I just make nice on them, make them trust you. <clears throat> Types of questions, that's really, uh, um, uh, ABC of, of, of interviewing on journalism one-on-one, -on -one, 101. Uh, one of the first things, if any, any interview lecture that you do, you, you talk about types of questions. And for anyone who had one journalism class or who has any kind of experience with that, we have what we call open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. So many times what happens with inexperienced interviewers they come in with a lot of closed-ended questions. They basically waste the audience's time for about 15 minutes trying to situate the person. So the first question you ask, oh, Chris, thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to have you here. When did you get to Miami? Oh, 2005. Oh, that's great. Did you come alone? Ah. Okay, did you come to Miami first? So I've already wasted five minutes of my audience's time with irrelevant pieces of information that you should know. So the who, the when, the where, they are closed-ended questions. They are more factual. The what can go both ways, depending on the what. Uh, but they are just, these are factual questions. When, where, who. So you should know those answers prior to uh, uh, the interview. So then you can ask open-ended questions, which will lead to much more relevant and interesting and unforgettable answers. So rather than asking me when I got to Miami, you can ask, Chris, you got to Miami in 2005. Um, what was the most, uh, the worst experience you've had ever since? Okay. Or something like that. That will bring out the best of the answers and not just, so by the time you just ask me, oh, Chris, uh, when did you get to Miami? Oh, 2005, ah, oh, how did you feel about it? Okay, how did I feel about it? What kind of answer am I gonna give you? Oh, I felt great, it was really interesting, right? So that's, try to focus on open-ended questions, why and, and how and somewhat. So good questions, they bring good answers. They bring new ideas. They make the interviewee think. You know you nailed it when either the person starts crying or when the interviewee will look and say, wow, nobody ever asked me that. That's such an interesting question. You know you nailed it, you got it, okay? And the same way you feel this way, I guarantee you, everybody watching felt the same way. And that's what you wanna, uh, uh, you wanna transmit. Good questions, they are concise. We had some colleagues in Washington, and I'm not gonna name names, some correspondents from Brazil who had, uh, who love to make a speech out of questions. At the White House, at Congress, at the, the Brazilian Embassy. And they would make a speech out of the question to show, how much they know. That's not the point. Ask the question, be concise on your question. Okay, be direct, be polite and be concise. Do not make a speech out of your questions. Good questions are clear and they are correct. That's really important. So you've done your homework, you've prepared and you're interviewing me and you start interviewing, hi Chris, so good to be here with you. Welcome to our show. Welcome to our live and, and thank you so much. So you got to Miami in 2010. Uh, no, actually 2005. Oh, of course, 2005. 
you lost the credibility with your audience. You should know better. So be careful. Make sure whatever word comes out of your mouth is correct. Okay. Uh, good questions. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this in, in the next slide, but they are singular. They are not plural. We have a tendency of asking plural questions. Oh, Chris, what were the most challenging uh, things that you went through when you got to Miami? I'm going to answer probably in a very abstract way. Well, you know, I miss my family. I'm going to give you a list. If you ask, Chris, you got to Miami in 2005. What was the most challenging situation you went through when you got here? Whoa, made me think. What was it? Right? So that's, that's what's important when you're asking questions. You want to bring something that comes from way deep from that person. And that comes from singular questions that are singular, not plural. Don't, you know, tell me. Uh, well, and I got to the tell me in a second, but you know, what, what were the, the five more interesting things you've learned since you got to Miami? I'm going to list things. Well, what was the most that brings out the best answers? And the best questions, they are unexpected. Okay. So like I said, they are challenging, but always respectful. So always be careful not to jump into uh, issues that, that you didn't discuss that you deal with and you know they're sensitive issues. So be respectful of people. <coughs> Avoid the pre-interview. What do I mean by that? I've been seeing, and in some interviews that I've been uh, uh, in the background kind of uh, just helping out, um, I've seen people actually do a whole pre-interview five minutes before turning on the camera. That means you're giving, you're losing momentum. You're giving the interviewee a, a set of thought, thoughts that uh, he or she would really, it would lead the mental state and it would prevent uh, from being natural. Because we are, we're always thinking. And when you know ahead of time that we're gonna cross a bridge, we prepare for that bridge, don't we? Same thing with questions. So good questions. Like I said, you're unexpected. Okay, so don't do a pre-interview prior, five minutes before when you sit down on the Zoom call and you start talking, chatting, because you're giving away how the interview will be. What I'm seeing a lot is, is people explaining in detail how the interview will be. So they come into into this either Instagram live or Zoom call, and they start, okay, so here's what we're gonna do, Chris. I'm gonna introduce you. Then I'm gonna ask you about you coming to Miami. Then I'm gonna ask a little bit about your experience in journalism, but we're gonna focus in your academic life. Okay, I'm, I'm literally thinking of all the answers. And then you lost the momentum. And uh, something else that I talk a lot when I do the media training, please do not uh, uh, ask for questions when you are on the other side and do not give questions to your interviewee. You lose the momentum. You're not allowed to do that in journalism. You are supposed to just have a set of topics and deal with those topics. So make sure that you follow those guidelines because they are gonna bring the best answers. Uh, I'm going to go fast. Now we're almost done. But you have, uh, usually people tend to ask two questions in one, ask one at a time. You know, you don't need to, you don't need to rush and ask, Chris, uh, when you got to Miami, what was your highest expectation or your highest frustration? And how did you deal with it? Okay, wait for the answer. Listen to the answer. And then you ask the second question. It could be the same as you're planning, but wait, because there might be something coming from that answer that it's way more powerful. And many times the source will talk, the interviewee will talk and will forget the second question. And you're gonna have to repeat. Opposite questions, and we talked about plural, and, uh, but people tend to do that a lot. Tell me, what are the advantages and disadvantages of living in Miami? Okay, 
Hey, Chris, what, are the, what is the most, what do you feel is, is the most advantage for you in, in choosing Miami as your residence? Ah, hmm. And, and the disadvantage here. Ah, interesting. And so on. Long questions that tell a story. Usually, like I said, uh, you know, the good questions are concise. And most people who tell, uh, who ask long questions, they usually tell a story about them. So before asking a question, I'll say, hi, you know, I got to Miami in 2005. Uh, it was really interesting, but first I went to Washington because I went to study. Oh, I lived, it was so cold. But how about you? What do you think, you know, about living in Miami? Okay, again, if you're interviewing somebody, it is not about you. It's about the interview and the person you're interviewing. Cliche questions, they kill me. How do you feel about winning the lottery? Well, how do you feel about winning the lottery? How do you feel about losing your father? How do you ask a question that's concrete okay so make sure that because the answers might surprise you if you ask concrete questions uh and 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 to me the worst that people who have gone through training with me they know how i feel about conta um pouquinho tell me a little bit about something oh friends you got to miami in 2005 tell me a little bit how how it was, how it is to live in Miami. Tell me a little bit. You know, conta um pouquinho sobre sua vida em Miami. What is, what kind of question is that? And trust me, pay, you're, you are all gonna pay attention to the next lives you watch and you're gonna, you're gonna hear me. You're gonna remember me in your mind. It's crazy. Tell me a little bit about something. Conta um pouquinho. No, não conta nada. Ask specific questions. When, when uh, Andre asked me to do this in English, and I do this in English a lot because I teach in English, uh, which is fine, but, but I kind of, I wasn't sure just because many of you will be communicating and asking questions in Portuguese and the terminology is the only thing that changes. But, but that's, you know, that's bottom line. So during the interview, you want to look into the interviewer's eyes to build trust. And one thing that's really important is to look around and recognize, notice objects behind in your surrounding. If you're doing an in-person interview, look around. So you're interviewing somebody you don't know that has a kid uh, uh, or a dog or something that brings, remember that video? Uh, people don't remember facts, they remember motion and emotion. So you wanna bring that emotion. So if you notice, something different than what you came to interview, ask. I have an example that was, uh, I was behind the scenes on an interview on a recent, not so recent interview when uh, uh, that uh, uh, GBA Entrevista, the Guia Brasil America with Rosaria Valeriano and Rodrigo Constantino, they were interviewing uh, Nizi Yamaguchi. She was uh, uh, being considered for the health ministry, at, you know, a couple of months ago or so. And they were interviewing Nizi, <clears throat> and I was behind the scenes. I was just watching because I was kind of guiding a, a few things. And, and suddenly Rodrigo looked and he saw behind her a painting with some words in Japanese. She's Japanese Brazilian and is some words in, in Japanese. And was, we were talking about health and COVID-19 and all of that, not, not, not we, they were. And, and suddenly, uh, she stopped when he asked and she got kind of emotional and she looked and she said, cura, cure. For those, and I know, I've known Izzy for many years. I know who she is. She's all about cure, curing people. She has a mission. So people who've seen her in the news uh, don't know that. I, I know that. And, and she's all about curing people. She has a mission with her medicine and she does a lot of, uh, she has, she brings a lot of spirit, spirituality into her medicine. She's one of the top oncologists in, in Brazil. And so when she said that, and trust me, that I guarantee is what people will remember out of that interview. Everything else she was talking to every other CNN Brazil and everybody else about COVID and, and the Ministry of Health and all of that. 
Nobody asked that question. Nobody paid attention. Okay. That's what you want to do because that could change really, really uh, the course of your interview. And that could, again, switch from a mediocre that everybody's asking that same question to an unforgettable interview. And just the final tips, you want to clarify everything and anything you don't understand. The reason you're interviewing people is that you actually want to tell other people about them and you want to learn about them. And you, you're not there to show how much you know, okay? Again, focus on the person. And if you don't understand, uh, you ask, what do you mean by that? Because it's really important how many times I was in Washington doing like, you know, hard news, interviewing, uh, uh, you know, tough politicians and all of that and, 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 and doctors who just discovered something or, and, and did a study or published a study. It's very really complex. And I've seen so many journalists that would come into an interview like that and pretend they know it all. And at the end of the day, when they publish the article, nobody understands anything, right? So, and the same thing with your lives. So I know this is, there, there is a lot of journalism talk here, but you can apply to how you handle your lives, your interviews, your webinars. And a final tip here is, be humble and practice. You know, those are the key elements for a successful interview. Listen, prepare, listen, and be humble and practice. So, um, and that's what we're gonna do now. I think I, I, uh, I talked seven minutes longer than I expected, but I got excited about it. So, all right, let me stop here. I think I, we could start with some questions and uh and then uh role playing okay questions i have one chris um is there any any way to interrupt the interview without being rude or disrespectful yeah. is there any tip to do that yeah let's why don't we role play that so, okay, Andrea, and who wants to, to ask questions? I want. Renata. Oh, sorry, Fernando. No, never mind. Okay, go Renata first. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi. Uh, Chris, is there any, way, uh, any um, uh, option that the, the interviewee, uh, I know you, you mentioned hey, that- hey, hey, Hang on, let, let, before we get to your question, let's try to role play a little bit of how you interrupt an interviewee who doesn't stop talking. So Andrea will be the interviewee who will not stop talking. Who wants to interview her? <laughs> okay, Fernando. What about me? You wanted to talk, so interview Andrea. Oh, okay, so and, and Andrea's gonna start talking and uh, not stopping, right? Hey, exactly, okay, so and Andrea, you're gonna interrupt her. Andrea, tell me a bit about your life. Tell me a bit about, about your company. Oh, and the... <laughs> <laughs> no, just a little bit, just a little bit, just, a little bit, just you know, <laughs> tell me just a little bit about what you do in business, just a little bit. You know? Nothing important, okay. just a little bit. Okay, so I was born in uh, December 30th, 1966. <laughs> <laughs> in a beautiful day at 10, Something nice. uh, PM. <laughs> I grew up in Ouro Preto in Brazil until I was nine years old. Then we moved to Belo Horizonte. Wow, Belo Horizonte? That's yeah. terrific. And, and so, but what made you come to Miami? <laughs> That's a good one. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question. Oh, okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry, just to complete. See, what I did is I listened. Mm -hmm. And then I used that as, okay, now it's my turn. And I came back to what I Okay, just jumping, right? Okay. Just, but Thank but, you. Picking up, but picking up on what the person said. So then it's not like, I'm sorry, Andrea, can we move on to my question or something <laughs> like that? So why you want to want to listen? So by listening and paying attention, you can easily switch the cycle of the questioning yeah recently we i believe we all have been witnessing you know interviews 
uh, by anchors and good, you know, in big networks. Right. We follow a lot of, you know, back and forth. It's not even an interview. It's like a discussion, mm -hmm. uh, very heated discussion sometimes, right? Right. I think it froze. Am I freezing or Andrea? No, it's fine. No, nobody's freezing. Fernando, your question. Andrea is freezing. But I think, I think Renata had a question uh, and I interrupted her. I'm sorry. Twice. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. It twice. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, I know you said that um, usually the interviewer does not tell the interviewee the questions. But are there any cases that the interviewee is maybe too shy? or to, uh, that maybe, in some cases, would, would it be better for the, the interviewee to have an idea of what's going to be asked, just so that the interview goes, uh, happens smoothly? Uh, never, because the interview, you know? never, never. Never, because the interview will be the most boring interview of your life. Oh. Because okay. they are going to be probably reading the answers. I've seen it happen, so I, 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 and, and the more shy, and the more shy, or the shyest, the, the, shyer. Shyer, yeah. the shyer they are, um, the more boring the interview will be because they're going to try to prepare so much. And I've seen it. And, and, and they, they basically have a piece of paper and they try to mm. read it. And if they don't know how to read the teleprompter, it's really boring. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 yeah. So, so you, you don't, you really don't because you want, you don't want to lose the natural you, you want the expressions of surprise yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. And if that person, I feel that if the person doesn't want to be interviewed, don't be, but if they are going to be interviewed, so what you do want to do is give them a sense of topics. And that's something I go through in media training a lot. And I think you've seen some of my media training uh, yeah. talks, yeah. but in media training, I talk a lot about uh, 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 the fact that you don't give out the questions because uh, you, you don't ask the questions because you sound like, like totally unprepared if you ask those questions. And, and it's really important that, that, that you, you leave out the naturality for the moment. But what you do want to do is you want to ask the interviewer or even as the interviewee, you can ask, you know, what's the interview about? And okay, so it's the interview about office and call. Is the interview about me, my personal relationships? Is the no the interview when I did the director mm -hmm. in Miami with more frequency? Uh, I would say it's about life and you, and I will cover everything. And it, but it, sometimes, it, sorry, no. And sometimes if you're doing a business story, you want to talk about business. And I remember when I first came to Miami, I still did some freelance work. And uh, I used to write a lot uh, as a freelancer for uh, a PSP magazine. And uh, uh, Jeb Bush was the, uh, the, the governor at the time. And there was a lot of negotiation with alcohol. And PSP asked me to do a story, to do an interview with, with Jeb Bush on, on alcohol, import, export negotiation with Brazil. And I remember talking to uh, his press secretary at the time. And they said, OK. I'm going to give you, we're going to give you three minutes, no more than the three, five, I don't remember, but it was really short. And please do not fall any questions outside of that. All I wanted was that, so I accepted. But I've seen journalists that made that agreement and then come out, oh, can you tell me you're getting a divorce? And so when I'm doing the media training, I'll tell the, you know, if you are my client for media training, I'll say, you know, Find a way to answer the questions that go back to your message and avoid. And you can simply say, I'm sorry, I, I, I really don't want to talk about this now. Maybe in a few months I'll be ready to talk and I'll promise you an exclusive. That's it. Calmly, you know. But so you can, you can pinpoint the topic, but never the questions. And people will try to ask you for the questions. And, uh, but, but either way, as an, as an interviewer or an interviewee, you should not. So you can ask that a subject be avoided, specifically. Yes, you can. You have the and, right. And, and the journalist has the right to say, uh, so in that case, I don't want to be limited. So I don't want to interview you. Okay. Or they can say, okay, it's a, it's a deal. 
My interest at the time was to get that story out about alcohol. I got it. Okay. okay. So, and it was fine. All right. Fernando, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hi, Chris. Uh, I would think that most of us are normally on the other side of the table, right? As mm -hmm. interviewees, at least yes. uh, that's what happens with me. And I, I don't recall ever interviewing anyone, uh, at least not for, you know, recorded or video or anything like that. And it's, uh, it's very usual that it doesn't go well in the sense that the, the interviewer <laughs> does not drive it direct well in the in the sense that you're you're saying uh, study the subject know your you know yeah. know what you're talking about what you're asking about L listen right and uh, and go make it a conversation not a script right mm -hmm. uh so but i guess uh what would be the you know the tips for the interview that's, that's a whole yeah that's a whole different workshop on media training. i understand i uh, understand just, uh, but just module, like quick module, tips module, like to, to try to <laughs> quick tips to, okay but a so, lot of people okay. a lot of people have seen me talk about it and it's it's still i shorten it a little bit but it's still about the same media training workshop and i'll be glad to do it i know juliano has seen it at, at the recommendo i know Renata has seen it uh, uh but but bottom line is to be in control and if you have that's why I start the coaching sessions with creating the message. Because if you have the message, if you have your identity clear, if you know what you're doing, if you know what you want to say, you just, you just run around that question. Uh, people so, can so, ask you a hundred times, a right. hundred things. You just answer what you want. And, and that's training as well. So I'm just going to stop there okay. yeah so basically, have, basically what you're saying is the the other side of the coin you are saying the interviewer don't mm -hmm. lose control and you were saying interviewee if you figure that exactly. the interviewer exactly does not have control does exactly. not understand what they're doing take control that's basically what you're saying right absolutely and and i work both ways and so yeah got it got it okay we have multiple questions alessandra and sergio lopez yeah, I want to make sure we have some. I want to make sure we have some time to practice. So, yes, go ahead. Who okay. is next? Alessandra and Sergio after. You muted. Oh. Yes, Chris, very quickly. It's just you know, lives have become very you know common in nowadays with uh, you know the digital marketing becoming a really powerful tool. So. Mm -hmm. And many people that really don't have a lot of experience, they need to do it and they're doing. And is there any you know, tips, anything that you can tell us about it? Oh, you mean not interviewing, just lives? No, interviewing, right. Because lives are becoming something very, very common. So is there right. any tips, anything that you, maybe like a behavior or you know, anything that I, you... I, I, I think that's kind of what I went through. You know, maybe I'm not, I'm not understanding the question. <laughs> But I think it's is there anything different that you can let us know anything because it's something that many people who really don't have a lot of experience in there. Exactly. You know. Yeah, you have to practice. You have to know your subject. You have to practice. You have to understand the questions you're asking and why you're asking them. And then all you have to do is really listen. I know it seems uh, a, an incredible difficult thing to do in today's world. But that's the most important. Be present. Be mind, you know, mindfulness. Be there at the moment. Forget about everything else. Before I start a coaching session, before I start a, 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 my class, before I'll start a talk, I will stop anything I'm doing at least 10 minutes prior to it. I'll turn off, not turn off my phone, but I'll stop looking at messages. And I will just disconnect so I could connect. And that's what most people don't do. Just by doing that, I guarantee you, you're gonna be present at the moment and listen to the answers to ask more unforgettable uh, questions that will, better yet, to ask questions that will lead to unforgettable answers. I don't know if I, I can answer that more than, you know, the tips that I've, that I've given so far but uh right it's just because people missing. Are, they become very you know nervous in order to do that but you know it's extreme thank you 
Yeah, people, people get nervous, no matter how media savvy they are. They get nervous uh, being interviewed. And if you think you're nervous interviewing people, you know, some people, oh, I'm nervous to interview somebody. Uh, they are much more nervous than you are. And you just don't want to show. And if I'm doing media training, I say, you could be as nervous as hell, but don't show it. And the same thing if you're interviewing somebody, you don't want to, because it's about, it's a power game. It's a power game and you need to be in control. You don't want to give the mic and, and interviewees will try to grab the mic from you. And if you are on the other chair, you want to be in control. So that's why I like to do the three modules because it's kind of, it kind of goes, comes around. Right, thank you. Yes, yes, behind the mom's back. Uh, Sergio, watch, no? Yeah, I believe Sergio first. Um, I'm a little bit nervous to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit, uh, what, tell me sorry? a little bit when you came to Miami, how, how do you feel? <laughs> that was very good. Uh, <laughs> my question is, um, that the TV channel that I watch for when I want to to know about politics, mm -hmm. this specific channel, but most of them, the, the interviewer started the, the question with a statement. It's not a question. He started mm -hmm. talking about uh, what the, obviously is the agenda of the channel. Mm -hmm. And then finally, he asked, what do you think about this? And then when they, obviously the, the interviewee uh, start answering, he obviously he has a different view of vision because he's from the, the opposite party and he's immediately immediately interrupted because he's growing in his message in a in a, in a channel that is supposed to be so are you watching fox news i'm kidding uh, no it's the, the opposite and then, <laughs> okay. and then uh, as a professional journalist and a, as an expert, and uh, I, I, I'm curious to know what's your position, what do you, what do you think about this technique of interview, which yeah. in, the, in the end is not interview. It's awful. Of course not. Of course not. That's awful. But that's why I'm training new journalists so then they don't do that. But uh, that's awful. That's the reason why I got into teaching journalism. And uh, because it's awful, the quality of the quality of the questions that come out of it. But most of the time, uh, do you watch, is this network news? Or I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to put you on the spot, but there's a huge difference between local news and network news and 24-hour and news, okay? So we're talking about very different styles. Local news, it's usually, even if it's a big market like Miami, so we, you know, we have small market, mid-market um, mid and, and large markets, and very young people just out of school, they usually go to small markets so they can learn. And Miami is considered a big market. And, but, but you shouldn't, I mean, honestly, Miami is a different planet. So you really don't want to uh, uh, consider Miami the, you know, the, the standard uh, for journalism. But still, you have, the, if it's local news, they're not as well prepared. You see the anchors making comments a lot. And I always tell my students, because they prepare a newscast at the end of the semester, and I always tell them, I said, you know, you don't need to give your opinion because you are in the anchor's uh, uh, job, in the anchor's chair. Uh, don't do that. But you don't see that as much, you know, we're talking about network news like Bronkite and those people who are like great uh, old time journalists. Um, they won't, they, they wouldn't be doing that. So, so what you're seeing is a lack of professionalism in my mind, and that's not what I would teach. I don't know if I answered that. But. So Thank I'll you. stick to what I just said today. <laughs> and Thank don't you. don't tell me to tell a little bit. Conta um pouquinho. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> it drives me crazy. I just <laughs> ask a question. Chris, I have another question. Uh -huh. um, especially for webinar, for presentations, virtual presentations, when there is a lack of, you know, the contact with, you know, your audience. Um, is there any techniques that can make the, the, the speaker 
um, feel more comfortable or be more uh, attractive to the audience because you were talking to a screen. Normally, people are muted, so you don't see the reaction uh, of the you know your audience for what you are saying. So you don't know if they are enjoying your presentation, if they are not, if it's boring. It's not uh, again, uh, I, I just try to, I, I think that the, the best you can uh, look like more, you know, more like a presential presentation, people feel more comfortable and more, uh, uh, I, I don't know if because I, on doing this. I, don't, I don't know if because I teach and I'm used to seeing 20 people in front of me in person, and I am very perceptive and I kind of see everything and I like right, you know, with, with the, the teaching now remotely, I can just, I can see everybody at once and I can just look at, at, you know, John and I can say, you know, like a student and I can say, John, stay with me. I see he's looking at his cell phone. I'll just, Come on, stay with me. And I will just, I call on people, you know, and, and, and. I pay attention to people and I listen to people. So I think it all, all comes down to paying attention and listening and being with them. You know, you're not physically with them, but I'm here with you now. I'm not looking elsewhere. I'm not doing anything else. I am full, you know, it's the mindfulness of being with people. People can feel it. And I think that's, and the comfort really comes from practicing, only practicing because you can look at everybody nowadays i can look at all of you as if you were here as if we were talking you know and i can i don't see many of you who are not on camera but but i think if everybody uh, was off were off camera that i would be very um, it would be very strange because i need the connection i need the energy back when i'm talking and and um but i think you know as i'm looking at you uh, I'm seeing everybody and I see the reaction and I see the, the nodding and I see, and that makes me comfortable, you know, but I think it really comes from, from practicing, practicing. And you know what? I've been doing this for, for, you know, many, many, many years, uh, not, not talks or not, you know, but I've been teaching and I've been a journalist and I've been doing the interviews and, and uh, I get more comfortable at it every time. And I'll be honest, I practiced before coming in here today. So I went through the whole thing as if I had 20 people watching me. I do it. I do it because I think practice is your best friend, you know? So to me, if I can say anything, it's like if you can leave with two ideas from this talk is practice, research, don't rush steps and listen, pay attention. You know, that's, it's really simple. It's, it always, it comes down to that, in my opinion, you know. Thank you. Can we role play a little bit to get some experience? Yes. <laughs> so I'd like for somebody to, I need two people to volunteer. I'd like for somebody who's planning on, who said uh, she's Glenn, a Glenn show? said, Glenn has a question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, and, we can, and we can certainly role play. Uh, good evening, Chris. So actually, it's two questions now that I think about it. About two, three weeks ago. What did I say about ago, asking two questions? What's that? What did I say yeah. about asking two questions? What did you say? I don't remember. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I was probably answering my email. Yeah. See? I'm telling or, or you. Or eating my um, dinner, you know. Kind there of we deal. go. So, yeah. so, but my point is, you uh -huh. want to ask one question, wait for the answer, and then ask another. That's part of the training. Because when you ask two questions, you, you, most of the time you're not gonna get a full answer of either. But anyhow, go ahead. I just okay. had to take advantage of you saying that. Uh, and I enjoyed every minute of it, thank you. Um, <laughs> about two, three weeks ago, I was interviewed uh, for a podcast, which obviously is all audio. It's a mm -hmm. different setup. Well, like you said, you can't really get the feedback. Um, I did not ask what questions they were gonna ask, but just give me some of the topics so I could right. prepare. I had a couple of, oops, sorry, phone is on. Uh, I, so I had at least a couple of days to prepare, just like you said, I needed to be able to react based on what they were gonna ask. 
um, maybe should I have asked a question or two and see if the interviewer would have given me or just do what I did? No, you do what you did. You, I do do, what you, I did. you sound, and if I do media training, just like I said, you sound like a total unprofessional if you ask the questions. Unless you're dealing with somebody who's also unprofessional, then they don't even know that's wrong. Okay. <laughs> but, but you're going to lose the momentum for okay. sure. And may I ask okay. a second question? Of course, please. I see all the books behind you. Have you read them all? And which one is your I favorite? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> How's that for a question? Little Prince. The Little Prince is my favorite. My, I couldn't hear you, my little friend. The Little Prince. Oh, little Prince. Principe. Beautiful. Thank you. Já pode ser Miss, Chris. Okay, so, uh, so Yara, you said you have a show? Um, I'm helping to co-host a Space for Women show, and there will be some Brazilian co-hosts with me, but it's uh, in our, yeah? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so, yeah, so um, I guess I should practice, right? <laughs> That's what I was hoping, that uh, when you said that, I said maybe, so can we, Practice a question and that uh, you might want to ask at the day and maybe somebody can volunteer to be your interviewee. Uh, sure. I, who wants to be my interviewee? S since I'm a fellow techie, I can be one. <laughs> okay. Uh, Glenn, how has the coronavirus impacted your work balance uh, as a tech industry leader? during this pandemic, I know you have grandkids and you know, remote learning is probably taking a toll. Yeah, uh, I have a 12 year old seventh grader who sits in my home office so I can kind of keep an eye and make sure she's, she's following her task, which it's pretty hard for any 12 year old to sit for six hours. Heck, we all sit for 10 or 12 hours. I don't know how we do it. Uh, but as far as changes, changes every day. And, you know, we got to be adaptive. We got to be resilient. And one way or another, I got to make sure she finishes the seventh grade. Uh, okay. Can somebody do a follow-up question? Let's just keep rolling. So somebody can do a follow-up question to that. He didn't answer. He didn't answer what she asked, by the way. Okay. Can somebody do a follow-up to see if you get to the, to the question? Yeah. Hi, Glenn. How, how do you follow up her uh, assignments every day? So that is, we, we plan a 15, 20 minute sit down after she's done, review what she has accomplished and then what she's missed so we can make sure that she puts a plan in place to get it done, let's say by eight or nine tonight, whatever, whatever time it might be and ensure that she's staying on task, which again, quite difficult for a 12 year old, but we've got to put a plan out there to make sure she does finish on time. Okay, Yara, do you mind repeating your question? Just keep it short, don't get to the second part, just keep it short, what was the question? Uh, I believe how has your work-life balance been affected by the pandemic as a tech industry leader? Okay, so has he answered that? Uh, he answered he the part about on, his family. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He focused on what interested him mm -hmm. about the question because she added a grand, granddaughter, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right? So what happened was by adding the granddaughter, you lost him. Okay? So he did not focus on what you really wanted to know. You guys following me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's what happens many times. So rephrase the question, Yara, to see if you get to that, to what you want. Uh, well, I, I like the part of the granddaughter. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> put it on, but yeah, but you can put that on first. Okay. You, can, you can put it on, you can say, uh, you know, Glenn, I know you have a granddaughter. I'm sure that uh, things have been, uh, does she live with you, Glenn? Is that part yes. of the deal? Okay. Yes. I know you have a granddaughter who lives with you and that has probably, 
really affected uh, your work life uh, uh, situation in, as a leader in the tech industry. But how has COVID 19 really affected your daily life? First, whatever. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is that be direct and put the granddaughter first and get to the question that you really want to answer for as the last thing he hears. Because our minds, there's something, they, they work in a very funny way. And so we really want to lead the question to get to the answer that we want. And if people don't answer that question, you want to keep asking. Does that, is that, does that make sense at all? It, it makes complete sense. And when's the next sales coaching seminar you're going to do? Because what you're talking about is how do you lead a customer to a close? Yeah, it's all about it's all about paying attention. I think uh, at the end of the day. But all right, let's let's let's. Uh, you got any questions or you got it or? I yeah, I got it. It was great. Thank you. I need to keep that in mind. We all do. <laughs> all right. Who's next? We still have a. Uh, minutes or 15 minutes or so come on let's take advantage of this i, I have a question chris uh, you 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 mentioned several times mindfulness right mm -hmm. and, uh, and doing the homework preparing everything uh do you think that practicing meditation will help you be a better listener? That's a tough question, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to a bad answer here. Um, I, I really appreciate those who do meditation, and, uh, and I think that it brings them to a level of understanding of life and everything, and of calmness and uh, control of the energy and all of that. And I appreciate that, but I can't stand still and meditate. So I, <laughs> I'm not the right person to, to answer that question. But I think it's extremely powerful. Uh, uh, my meditation is to just stay with me. I, I just, I stop what I'm doing and I just, you know, and, but I think each person has his or her own way of finding that, that center. So the world could be falling apart around me. I'm here with you. I don't see anything else. And, and, and honestly, I don't hear, I don't see. And, uh, uh, and I do what I have to do at that moment. So, so, but that's something that I've developed on my own pretty much. I, I cannot use the artifice of meditation to come to that point because I get nervous just, just, you know, just to think about doing it, uh, so it has the opposite effect in me. I've, I've always had the opposite effect on everything. You know, if I take something to sleep, I'll be awake. If I take something to be awake, I'll go to sleep. So, so I stop doing anything like that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it answers your question. I just have a very personal. But, uh, but you know, but people who do it, um, uh, it's amazing. And, 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 you know, we have Juliano here and Flavia Goldenberg, who is uh, the best hygienist that I know, and she has done uh, a lot of work with meditation and with people that I know has had incredible, incredible effect and impact on their lives. So I strongly recommend, it's just not for me. So I think if every person needs to understand what works for them. And I think we, we fall into a situation most of the time that we kind of just, oh, somebody did something and we do it, but we don't, again, we don't listen to ourselves. So how can we listen to the world, to everything, if we can't really listen to what our soul uh, is basically telling us? So that's what I believe. That's way beyond the topic today. <laughs> Thank you. Chris, I have a question. Um, okay. Especially nowadays with so many lives and webinars and interviews online and virtual, a word. Um, what is the most common mistake that people make when they are in front of a camera? 
that we should avoid. Do you mean interviewing or being interviewed? Uh, any, any kind of interaction with, you know, an audience. It could be an interview or, or a presentation or a panel. You know, my answer also is going to be a little bit broad and, and abstract maybe, but I think is uh, not being true to themselves. So they are trying to be somebody they are not on camera. Mm -hmm. And I think that happens a lot. So it goes back to module one. Okay, let's, let's develop your identity. Let's understand who you are. Who do you want people to believe you are? And, and uh, you know, some people want the camera to show, they create personas. Most people create personas in front of a camera, right? So uh, some of them are just tough. They are, they are you know, rude. Some of them, uh, they're really soft and they are understanding. And, and so, uh, and sometimes that doesn't go along with who you really are. And I think that's the biggest mistake that you're trying to be who you're not when you're in front of a camera. But if you look at the lenses, just like I'm having a conversation, I'm just having a conversation with you guys now. Of course, I prepare for it. I think because I've done radio for so many years, uh, you learn to, to, how do I, I used to say Improvise. That. You learn to pretend you're improvising. <laughs> That's oh, different. Pretend to improvise. Oh my goodness. It's a little bit more complex. <laughs> this is good. This is good. <laughs> That's what you do. Because you have, we say in Portuguese, passar o texto. So we have, I've typed up the, 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 the words that I'm going to talk. Then after typing up, I went through that with my editor. They made a change to one word or two words, a comma, and then I come in front of a camera or at that time in, uh, you know, on the phone and, and I will pretend I'm improvising everything I'm saying. And then they say, you know, but, and then they ask a second question after I've talked, that second question was planned. And then, so it's like, you really learn to, to pretend you're improvising so it comes out natural. But that, that's like 25 years of experience in this field. Uh, but I think most of the time, all you have to do is be yourself. You know, be yourself so then people can sense the naturality of who you are. And they can just feel you, you know? Hi, Chris. Can I make a question? Yeah, who, who's that? Juliano. Oh, Juliano. He has my friend. <laughs> Uh, first of all, thank you for sharing uh, this knowledge with us. Uh, but uh, what I'm, as you know, we, are, I, we have been discussing a long, a long time about these interviews, uh, me and you, and uh, and uh, we've been seeing a lot of people uh, during the interview wanted to show the interviewer uh, wanted to show they know more than the interviewee. Uh, and so sometimes it's just, you know, the guy speaking or trying to make a question. That's the question. There is no, there's no complete question. There is no, it's something empty. Uh, how do you, we can overcome this kind of situation? Because uh, you say, I, I'm, I'm going to say, like, what are you talking about? Sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's what we see. That's what we see a lot of that. And if we're going from, you know, the other workshop on media training module two is basically to train you on how to get around the stupidity of the interviewer. <laughs> Sorry, but that's what it is. And, and, and so you, you grab back the control. What you want as the interviewee is to deal with those people. If you're trained, whoo, you want them because they have no idea. You take control of their mic and that's it. Um, and that happens a lot, but these are people who are not experienced or who, you know, who, whose ego is so inflamed and that they destroyed. But do you think those interviews will be unforgettable? No, you know, and that's what happens. And that's exactly what's going on here. And that's, those are the tips that I, I really want to see better lives of people who think they know, but they don't. And it's okay not to know. I, I you know, I'm, I can't go 
do a surgery today. That's not my background. I have background in journalism. So let me do my job. And if you, you know, if I if I want to interview somebody, and I strongly recommend everybody to read, especially nowadays, do lives, accept to do lives, be interviewed, interview, but know what you're doing. So then people don't waste their time watching you. And I see what you're saying, Juliana, uh, a lot. And that's part of my, uh, that's what made me create this third module, to be honest, because it's ridiculous, you know? And, and, and people make a speech, they wanna show, they wanna prove to the world how much they know. And many times what they're saying is wrong. And I've seen that too. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. One more role play. Come on, we're having a workshop here. I want to make sure that I show you. I don't just tell you. What do you want us to to role play? Okay, I'd like to. Show you. All right, two more people. One will be asking questions, and the other will be answering. Who's doing interviews in the next few days? I volunteer for. Oh, for thank the role you. Play. <laughs> okay, do you want to interview or be interviewed? It doesn't matter, you pick. Okay, so who else? Who's going with Sergio? Me. Okay, Yara. So I don't e interview Yara, so because that's what you do anyway. So as the co host, you're going to be interviewing people in the near future. So why don't you come up with another question so we can pick on you? Uh, I'll try. Uh, okay. Because usually they are using like technical space questions. So uh, hopefully I'll <laughs> do it correctly. Okay. Um, you can, Joe, you don't have to work on, on questions that you'd be doing in the, yeah, as a co host. You can pick up a topic and just go for it. Sergio, and what is the, the funniest blooper you've had on Zoom during this quarantine? The funniest what? I'm sorry. Blooper, like funniest accident. Did you fart on camera? Did you do anything fun? Great Your funniest question. moment that, on Zoom. It's very interesting that you're asking today because happened today, this morning. We have a new uh, financial advisor. It's a female. Uh, um, uh, uh, on the Zoom, she lives in Alabama. Unfortunately, there is a hurricane now. And then, so, so we were 14 people in the call, and suddenly her, I suppose, husband passed uh, behind her naked. <laughs> and she was, and she, he was going to the, he was looking something in the kitchen. You know, the people that, <laughs> Uh, naked finding some um, uh, crackers or a oh glass God. of uh, milk. And then when she realized she came, it was very, very embarrassing. So um, that's, that's very fresh was this morning. And uh, yeah. she was gonna have a hard time to regroup because <laughs> it was her first meeting with the company and we don't and, and moreover the, the the husband if he is the husband is a kind of out of shape let's put this way <laughs> so i hope i can give you a good answer that's terrific excellent question excellent answer uh so now let me have anybody a follow-up follow-up question follow-up question to him he just gave you a very interesting situation. Follow-up question. What would be the next question? Anyone? So why didn't she have a virtual background on her screen? Well, I was about something. to say that. <laughs> but that's not something he could answer. I know. Ask a question that, virtual that he could Virtual backgrounds are, are safer. <laughs> I think you'll be... It would, be the, it would be more convenient to just lock down the, the husband in the room <laughs> and not let him to go away. Uh, hopefully they have a suite with a bathroom and a, and a, and a bed. So, but you know what? It happens just... so many times during this uh, pandemic. You probably already seen some videos that people, uh, you know, posted on, on social media 
of situations like this. And uh, there was so many. Oh my goodness. It's unbelievable. Why, People that's why brought their computer to the bathroom and kept, you know, on video during the live, using the bathroom, things like that. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a, no very, a very quick question. What's mm -hmm. this, the successful interview depends more in the quality of the questions or the quality of the answers? The quality of the answers, but the quality of the answers depend on the quality of the questions. Mm -hmm. So that's really bottom line. So, so you told a very interesting anecdote. So what would be the second question to get into some seriousness on some, some impact or some, uh, 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 a result from that interview so then people remember more and will come out of it with the lesson. What would be a follow-up question? For Sergio? No, mm -hmm. I, am uh, I am the interviewee. Okay, so, so the opposite, what are you learn if the pandemic for the last months of the most lesson you learn through these months? But let's try to go back to what he just said, because I think there is a follow-up question there that can lead to a lesson and to lessons in general. So she I, likes I'm the story. Huh? She, you like this story? There should be an article on this story. This is so. So what was her reaction? So that would be the next question. What was her reaction? Uh mm huh. -hmm. Okay. okay. I, think she, I think she should demonstrate some empathy to the husband and get naked as well. So <laughs> shows uni unity in the house, in the home. In the home. <laughs> so that, that's starting to show Sergio's personality, which is what you want to grab from him on an interview. So you don't want to stick to facts. You want to grab the motion and the emotion. And he's always, every time I see him at this meetings, he's really serious. Right? But now we're oh, getting he a different... very well. So exactly. <laughs> so now he's starting to show a different side of him. And that's what you want. You, wanna, you want to be able to reach people. You know, that's what you want. Because if you reach them, you get the best answers and the answers that will bring out the best from that person. And that's what you want out of your lives. That's what you want out of your webinars. That's what you want out of your interviews. And that's what you want when you look at the camera to bring the best in you and in, in, in the people you're interviewing, you know? So I think, I, I hope it's, it's been helpful. I know that time's up, but uh, yeah. I hope this has been a good launch of the uh, new series of workshops. Oh, yes, it's amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank you. much, Chris. Thank you. thank you all who participated. Thank you, Chris, for sharing you know, so you. many good information and uh, uh, information that we all need, especially on you know, these days that we are living. Uh, thank you for your expertise. Uh, and uh, thank you all for being with us. Um, I also would like to uh, uh, invite you all to participate on next week workshop. We're gonna have a workshop in two, two sessions on the 22nd and 29th about QuickBooks Online. Leo Rezende is the CPA that's gonna uh, actually be the instructor of this workshop. And I invite you everyone to register and be part of it, okay? Thank you all. Thank you again, Chris. Thank Love you. to have Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all so very much. much. Thank you, Chris. Well, wonderful Congratulations, week. Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much pleasure. for being here. My <laughs> pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, uh, bye. bye. Thank you so much bye -bye. for climbing. Bye, Andrea.